So this is just sort of a part two of the DIY stove jack thing. Um, I've had a chance to use it and it works great, but it's not so great for winter camping because in the morning, all the light comes through the clear here. So I'm gonna modify that by making little Velcro on curtains, little covers for this. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, so we're just gonna take the window and lay it on here. When you do this, if you're gonna cut this in like both pieces at once, this is a folded over piece of fabric here. Make sure that the backs or the fronts or whatever are together. Um, you know, just so you don't have the good side facing up and the good side facing up because then you'll have one shape that's backwards. So hopefully that'll, if that doesn't make sense, it'll be, become clear here. So I'm just gonna trace the window, you know, just the shape of the, that I want. And then I'm gonna give myself like a half inch seam allowance here and we'll go to about there and there this is a quilting ruler these things are great I am no quilter by any stretch but boy this is a great item we're just gonna go to the half inch mark in this ruler it's the center of the numbers And the beauty of these rulers, these grids, like you can make sure your cuts are square. Okay. And this is the inside of the stove jack and the side of the snow flap is the outside. So that guy will go there. This guy will go there. And then we'll fold it over like that. It also has a nice finished edge on it. Got our pieces neatly marked. And we're gonna head on over to the mini ironing board to press it, to sew it over to make that finished edge. When I fold stuff over like this to make a finished edge, I always do the short edges first, like this one and then this one. Cause that way, to me, it seems like they tuck neatly under the longer edges that way. I mean, I don't know if there's really any reason to do it like that. That's just how I do it. So I just flip it upside down just fold it back until you see the line. And then just do a quick, you know, just a pinch press on there. And then do the same thing. I'll try to face it towards the camera so you can kind of see. So you just fold it up until I see, you can see the chalk line that we drew. Kind of hard for me to see it, but just give it like just a, a pinch press all along try to get keep it nice and straight and sometimes you'll get a funny edge like this like when you fold this one back where it goes you've got this funky little tail and uh, you just nip that off you'll have one little raw edge there and or you can fiddle with it and turn it inside out and however you want to finish it but um, you know because this is just essentially a, a light blocker for a stove jack in a tent i'm not going to be super worried about you know getting a perfect perfectly hidden turn there okay so that's what you're left with after the uh turning leaves you with a nice neat finished edge and we'll head over to the machine i'm just using my regular small household machine for this um it has no problem sewing this stuff when i put the velcro tabs on there then we'll head over to the big girl machine. I'm pulling both threads to the back side. That way I can tie them off and I won't have to do a back stitch and an overlap here. So it'll be just a nice clean stitch all the way around the edge. That's the reason for the really long tails too. So I have thread to work with to tie it off. Thank you. 
right here, a nice long tail. And that's how it looks. Okay, on here you can see where the, the stitching is overlapped a little bit. And what you do is just go around to the back side and you'll have two sets of threads. You know, you have like the bobbin thread on, in this case is black, and then the uh, top thread is silver. So you, you figure out which ones went together. But you take your bobbin thread and you just give it a little tug and it creates a loop of the top thread here. And just carefully pull it through like that. And then check, see if it, because what you're doing is you're, you're unstitching a couple of these until you just have one row of stitching. So same deal, you know, you know pull the same uh, bobbin thread each time because you're just kind of back stitching where you overlapped at the end of the, the run. Looks like one more. You can't really tell where you started and stopped here. They don't have any back stitching. You don't have any overlap. It's just a, a clean line of stitching. Then when you come around to the back here, you just take your threads. It's kind of fussy, but it just makes makes it clean. You can just back stitch too if it's if you don't really care. But this is just how I do it. So you just give them a little tug. That's why I leave these long tails so I can easily tie it in a knot without struggling. Tie it down. Same thing. And I just clip the tails like that. And then I put crazy glue on this knot. That way I know it's not gonna come untied. So there's one cover. And then I'm gonna stitch some Velcro. You know, just like probably, I don't know, one, two, maybe just three little Velcro tabs on here and then corresponding tabs on the uh, stove jack, the clear stove jack stuff. Our pieces we made go right on here like that. Pretty nice fit. That's pretty much how they'll go. I'm just gonna put like three Velcro tabs, I think. Just one here, one there, and one there. Yeah, do like three quarters of an inch. And then the same thing, six pieces of the corresponding fuzzy stuff. This is bias tape. It's like two-sided tape for sewing. It's not necessary to use something like this, but it just makes it easier and I have it, so might as well use it. Stick it on there, peel the back off, and stick my little piece kind of where I want it. Then we'll take our cover piece, lay it over that until it lines up nicely. Good enough. Then take Taylor's chalk and just kind of mark where it's going to go. So now we can tell where the corresponding tabs are supposed to go. That's how that should look. I'm over at the big girl machine now. Get the Velcro going. Okay, all the Velcro tabs are sewn on. On here, and on the thing itself. So let's see how it fits. Right. Nice blackout window coverings for uh, sleeping in.
Well, I hope you found that helpful. I get that it's a really limited audience project, but it might carry over to something else you might be doing. So, as always, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.